All right, so today I'm actually going to be inside because uh, there's construction outside that's still noisy. I can't even hear myself think. So um, this is just my my office. It's not very nice right now. We're we're uh, still cleaning up after some remodeling around the house, and this is the room that turned into the. Uh, we don't know where to put it. We'll put it here. So uh, anyway, so uh, today I wanted to discuss. Oh wait. I had set an alarm when I was outside, but that was several minutes ago, so let me... Okay, so I'm going to do another alarm. I think that worked pretty well for last time. I, I felt like I got a, a decent amount out of, you know, off my chest and kind of organized some of my thoughts. And it didn't ramble on so long that um, the video editing and just, you know, the viewer or listener being feeling like it's just dragging on too long. So anyway, I, uh, I wanted to talk about, there was, a, there was a specific topic that I had in mind last night I was thinking about. I've been alluding to a lot of these ideas around like evolution and stuff and you know, they're, they're always just kind of like, okay, let's assume that it's true and what would then follow from that and kind of, you know, it's just food for thought ideas, but do I actually believe in evolution and all this kind of stuff? I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a theory. That's the thing for me is it's a scientific theory. So it doesn't matter what I believe here are here's the evidence of how reality works and if i choose not to believe that that's my own personal but that evidence still exists regardless of what i believe about it um now is that to say that it's true okay so then there's a totally different right because you can have evidence and still not have the truth and i don't know and nobody does nobody can know i think it's one of those uh, it's too much for humans, our capacity for knowledge and understanding and, and uh, research and evidence and all that kind of stuff is just far surpassed to be able to, for, for it would be far surpassed um, to expect this kind of, of treatment against, say, like evolution to be able to prove definitively that it's true or false. Um, so instead, we have to rely on inference. And this is where Bayes' theorem comes into play. And if you watched my, I think it was the first episode, I kind of discussed some of the Bayes' theorem's concepts. And so what you do is you build a construct in your mind, you create your belief based off of inference, what is the best data that you have available to you, what makes the most sense to you intuitively, all this kind of stuff. You put it all together, and then from that you make a personal decision, and that is going to be what your belief is. And then someone's going to introduce to you new data. And then you're going to incorporate that new data and you're going to adjust your probability using Bayes' theorems, you know, based, let's say, I shouldn't say using Bayes' theorems. You would, you can think that way to make your adjustment and then say, oh, okay, it's more likely the case that this is true. And then you can adjust your belief. You know, I, I, I think everybody is shorter than 5'10". And then you're like, oh, you got introduced to somebody who's 5'7". Okay, I guess everybody is, or sorry, everyone's taller than 5'10", and you got introduced to somebody who's 5'7". Oh, I guess I have need to shift my belief. That new data now points me to that everybody's at least taller than 5'7", until I meet someone shorter, right? Um, so that's kind of my idea with evolution, is like, okay, I, you know, I, I'm not a biologist. I'm, I'm an electrical engineer, mathematician, software engineer. Um, I, I do not know anything about well, I guess I shouldn't say I don't, don't know anything about I do not know the nuances of biology, but I do read the papers and abstracts and understand what the research is. I, I have an idea. I have a very good idea. I would say way better than the average person, um, but not because of formal education, just because I've been researching what other people have put together. And then I just use my critical thinking against what they're claiming to determine how much I shift my Bayes probability distributions for making my decisions, right? And, you know, I, I, I'd say when I first started, it was kind of like a fairy tale trying to like grasp this fairy tale, right? Evolution. It's so magical. Could it be possibly real? And to start, you know, I just kind of had to like, I don't know, let's find out. And you kind of just, okay, let's assume that's correct. What follows? Okay, let's assume that's correct. What follows? And you start getting a foundation of what Realizations these professionals, these, these um, people who have devoted their entire life to, you get a realization for the types of constructs that they've been building in their head by doing all those types of discovery. And then you're like, okay, you kind of get it. You're like, okay, I get where they're going with this. Now let's go back. And all those things I was like, let's assume, let's assume, let's assume. Let's start to not assume that stuff. And let's be a little more critical. And you kind of 
bring it back up a layer and you start rehashing this out. And I've been doing this over and over and over. And I would say that my Bayes distribution has shifted very much to, I think it's, if it's not generally accurate, I think it's a very good model of what is happening in reality. I, it makes sense. And every layer that I've uncovered, it makes sense. I, and again, it's not like you can prove it. And here, and this is the exact point that I was wanting to make is I, I get frustrated by the people who are like, well, you can't prove, you know, the, the evolution. You can't prove that, it, that, that the, the biology of, of all of life on this planet started from essentially interactions of atoms in such a way that spawned essentially conflict and then using that conflict some organisms were able to defeat other organisms absorb those other organisms and become then themselves more healthy more powerful and then using that layer upon layer of distribution you just get these organisms that are that, that are copy essentially it's the copying of yourself right if you copy yourself there is a mathematical probability that the copy will be incorrect and that's essentially the one of the elements of evolution is that genetic element of you copy this set of genes to that set of genes but there was a mistake because it's biology it's it's the real world it's not perfect and so one of those copies is going to be a tweak and now you have a new genetic code than the one you copied and that new genetic code is going to include with it some traits and those traits are going to be different than the previous one subtly but different and over millions of years as those two organis organisms are battling it out in the field whichever one has the more dominant trait is going to surpass the other one and when it makes its copies, it's more likely that it's going to spread on those, those, those uh, beneficial genetics, even though some of them, again, are going to get tweaked. It's just more likely that it's going to spread on those, you know, those, those benefit, beneficial traits. And then its offspring are more likely to su succeed than this one's offspring. And, and the thing is, is like 99% of all life on this planet is now extinct. Right? Like, there's been billions and billions of failures through evolution. So it's not like what we see today is, let's say, generally the set of what started. That's not even close to the case. And so when these people come to me and say, loop, there's like these, they, they try and find loopholes in evolution. So as an example, I, I, we had some friends who recently, were, we were talking about evolution and they believe in creation. And they said, um, that they had saw some discussion, whatever. Basically, scientists come back at the evolutionists with a giraffe's neck. The way that the blood pools in a giraffe's neck, if it were to bend its neck over, it would cause some sort of blah, blah, blah. And they have this like little, oh, evolution can't explain that. And to me, I'm like, yeah, you're right. Evolution can't explain that one thing. Um, but it's not that, okay, it's, it's not that evolution can't explain it. It's that you found like a what you think is a counterexample to evolution. Like it couldn't have happened this way, but there's no way that you can definitively say it couldn't have happened this way because you weren't there for the millions of years of evolution to see how it happened. Um, so it's just as much of a leap in logic to say that it couldn't have happened with evolution as it is to say it could, because you can't, there's just not enough data to definitively prove at that level of that like counterexample level that evolution's not real it doesn't it, you know that evolution is incorrect and this is the analogy that i'm drawing with this and i think it's a fantastic analogy is so if i took a blind person and put them next to my vehicle and i said tell me what kind of car this is and they go around and they feel it and they they you know go read their books and they're like okay if it's got wheels of this size if it's got a body length of this size this height this is what the symbol feels like and they, they go through and and they discover that my vehicle is a Honda CRV. And then they come back to me, you know, years later with all their research saying, okay, this, you know, the wheels turned out to be like this, but I could tell they weren't from the manufacturer. And so I had to deduce from the bolt pattern that blah, blah, blah. And they went through and they just gave you a treatise on everything that they did to determine that that was the exact model of my car, make and model of my car. And then I turned around and said, ah, but you didn't get the color. This blind person went through and did all this stuff, and then I'm complaining that they didn't get the color right. That 
is the exact same analogy of someone coming in saying, oh, but the giraffe couldn't have evolved with evolution. You're missing the point. Like all this other stuff has been has been put together in a definitive way and you're you're worried about this one little weird off detail. Yeah, you're right. He, they they didn't get the color. You're right. We have no we have no way of explaining exactly how in an evolutionary sense the giraffe's head works. Maybe I don't know. This is just their claim, but suppose we don't have any any way to explain from an evolutionary standpoint how the giraffe's heads work. That doesn't mean that evolution didn't figure it out. They took it took millions of years for it to figure it out. Oh, my time's up already. Uh, so I'll wrap up this thought. So that's essentially my my point was, I find that frustrating because it's purely irrational. It's it's really it's it's a grasp. It's a it's a grasping at straws to defend a belief, and. I don't want to, I mean, this, this is probably going to be a little bit of a divisive video if somebody watches it, because if you strongly believe that creation is one or whatever, you might find this upsetting, but creation is 100% irrational because by definition, the rationality is being able to formulate a Bayes probability distribution using your inference. That's what rationality is by definition. That's just what it is. And creation, and, and uh, let's just point out really definitively, that Bayes distribution requires data. You get data and you can build a distribution. If you don't have any data, you have nothing to make an inference against. And then you're using faith, something irrational to make your belief system because there's no data to support it. And there is no evidence of creation. Zero scientific evidence of creation. It doesn't it doesn't have a foundation in science that I know of. I would be happy to hear of scientific evidence of creation and I would take a look but as of right now I have zero evidence of scientific um, scientific evidence of creation and so if I'm going to add data to my Bayes distribution and have it shift me further away from evolution again I don't say I fully believe evolution is correct I don't think it's perfectly correct but I think it's pretty good and so my Bayes distribution has shifted that direction so that my inference leads me more into that area but if you can provide me scientific data, data, reality, if you can provide me any evidence in reality that shifts my distribution towards creation, I'd be more than happy to do that. I have yet to find, that's amazing to me. There's no evidence. I have yet to see any actual evidence. Blows my mind. And what blows my mind further is that if it's, a, if it's true that there isn't any scientific evidence, and even if it is not true and there is scientific evidence, it should be well accepted and maybe, who knows, again, I think my third episode I talked about the people's interpretations of facts, but um, if it's true that there is some scientific evidence, the amount of scientific evidence to counter it is overwhelming, way more than a freaking giraffe's head. And so to try and even use the scientific approach to explain how creation is more likely than evolution is just ridiculous it's i mean it would there's no inference there it's a it's logically inept um and so it it, it requires nothing but faith and then where i guess i struggle is i don't know that i have anything i don't know that i have anything really in common with somebody who's willing to disregard the reality around them purely for the sake of faith so they can feel better about themselves and where they are in this world that that to me is kind of trite meaningless and shallow kind of a kind of pathetic in my opinion um, but why do i feel that way i mean that's an interesting concept maybe i'll expand on that in my next episode is why do i feel it's a, there's a level of disdain for people who are like that. And I think it's probably based around that. I don't feel like they put forth the effort. Like I put in a lot of effort to read and understand, expand my knowledge. And it's, it was, it was a work. It took a lot of work. It took years of work to get to the experience of where I am. And I feel like these people just aren't willing to put in the work. And that to me is where I get a little frustrated. Like don't go around claiming stuff and trying to change everyone around you. If you didn't put in any work yourself to figure it out, get the hell out of here. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna expand on that one next time. Think on that. <laughs> yeah.
Hopefully this one isn't too divisive, but uh, yeah. All right, I'll see you next time.